don't expect. Everyone is expecting to defeat Ai rather easily. None of the spies mentioned the Lord not once in their assessment that we just read. The spies didn't mention the Lord not once. Their whole report focused on the presumption that their army was great and Ai's army was small. So the Jewish army marched confidently up that hill to Ai. But they soon came down clean for the lives, leaving 36 dead behind. The Bible says in verse 5, the hearts of the people melted like water. The hearts of the people melted like water. Joshua, a leader who was once magnified as we read his fame was noised throughout the land is now devastated. If some of your best plans have ever been dashed to pieces, then you can identify with how Joshua failed. It's time for Joshua to deal with the sin that's in the camp. And so Joshua in verses 6 through 9 of chapter 7 pleads with the Lord as to what has happened. It's kind of like he's saying, Lord, if I had known that you were going to do this, if you were going to allow us to lose, then I just would have stayed on the other side of the Jordan. I would have been content to stay up there. Like it or not. You know it and I know it. But when things doesn't go our way in life, we get mad at God, don't we? We do. I know I'm not. The only one. If something's not right in your life, when something doesn't go the way that you had hoped it to, when something doesn't go the way that you expected it to, you get mad. And we get mad at God very often. Amen? We do. Look at God's response. Verse 10 of chapter 7. He says, Get up, Joshua. Why are you on your face? In verse 13, he says, Up, sanctify the people. There's an accursed thing in your midst that Israel cannot fight the enemies until the accursed thing is taken away. In other words, deal with the sin that's in the camp. That's what the Lord is telling Joshua to do. Some of you need to hear those words this morning. Things are all out of whack in your household, if you will. Nothing ever seems to go right in your life. And perhaps there's sin in the camp. And you need to get on your face before the Lord and plead with Him until you know what it is. And then, when you know what it is, you need to get rid of it. For some of you, you know what the sin is. But you refuse to get rid of it. You refuse to sanctify your home and consecrate yourself to the Lord. And you be warned of this today. Until you do, you will experience one defeat after another defeat, after another defeat, after another defeat. You will in your household. There are numerous households today who could testify of that being true. They were aware of some sin in their homes and they let it go on and talk. Destroy them all! So Joshua sought the Lord. And the Lord told him what to do in order to identify who the individual was, who the sin fell upon. And it was Achan. It was Achan. Look at verse 19 now of Joshua chapter 7. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. And thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment and two hundred shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of fifty shekels weight, then I coveted them, I wanted them, and I took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver. Under it. I want you to know something else. God punishes sin. Achan had taken this gold and silver. The Lord had said no one is to touch, is to go to the treasury. Achan has taken this and he has hid it under his tent. Look at verses 24 and 25 and you'll see that God punishes sin. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zebra, and the silver, and the garment, and the wedge of gold, and his sons, and his daughters, and his oxen, and his asses, and his sheep, and his skin, and all that he had. And they brought them into the valley of Achan. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones, and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. Oh, how this must have hurt Joshua! Caused him much pain. Instead of killing the enemy, he must stone Achan, Achan's sons, Achan's daughters, his animals, and then burn them with fire. No doubt the whole family was aware of what Achan had done hiding the silver 
and gold under the tent. Can you hear the children crying this morning? They are surrounded by the Israelites as everyone looks on. These sons and these daughters of Achan are crying out to him, Daddy, why did you do it? Daddy, you were supposed to protect us and look after us. Daddy, we love you, but how could you ever do this? Daddy, was that gold and that silver worth losing your own sons and daughters Oh, how sin runs deep. Oh, how sin affects more than just the sinner. So many lives are ruined over the sin of one father. Lives are ruined over the sin of one mother. That silver, that gold, that woman, that thing that your eyes, not that your eyes on is not worth losing your whole family over. What a time of weeping. What a time of heartache this must have been. For Joshua. Now that the sin has been dealt with, it's time once again to go up to battle. Ai, you may be thinking, Jeffrey, what in the world does this have to do with me? How does this battle, lost at Ai, apply to my life here at the end of the year 2014? Listen carefully. Our focus today is not on the man named Achan. Our focus is on the AI in our own lives. The sin affected the whole camp. Israel was defeated by AI. The people were dispersed. Their hearts melted like water, the Bible says. And the AI in your life may be what you're discouraged about this morning. You see, Israel's AI may be your fight with your marriage. Your marriage is failing. You know it. Your spouse knows it. The Lord knows it. Every critical work, the judgmental attitude has resulted in a lot of hurt in your marriage. Your heart is melting like water today because of the pain that you feel. AI, for some of you, may be an addiction that you gave into. The temptation is ever before you. AI beat you because you failed to seek the Lord. AI, for some of you, may be your finances. The financial problems of 2014 are keeping you down and discouraged. Every time you look at AI, you feel helpless and without a strategy to move forward. AI, for you, may be family strife. You want your family reconciled. You want your family living for the Lord, but it seems everyone wants to do their own thing. Everyone wants to, to go their own way. And you know from the Israelites' example that we lose every time that we leave the Lord out. What is your AI this morning? As God looks upon you, everybody here is facing an AI. What have you gone up against in your own strength, your own way, and you failed? You messed up this past year. If you messed up, if your faith has been weak, if your life has not been the fullest for Christ, if you entered some battle and you weren't prepared to fight, and I have wonderful news for you. We serve a God of new beginnings. He's a God of new beginnings. Some like to say a God of second chances, and I don't necessarily like to say He's a God of second chances. Moses didn't get a second chance to enter the promised land. Remember in Numbers chapter 20 that God had instructed Moses to speak to the rock and it would gush forth water for him out of the desert land. Instead, instead he was impatient and angry and he struck the rock twice. And in Isaac and Sapphira, they didn't get a second chance when they lied to Peter about the giving. In Acts chapter 5, they fell over dead like that. And of course, Achan is not excused for his sin in our text either, is he? God punishes sin, period. Now, he allows new beginnings when he looks ahead and he sees your heart's desire to change. For example, let me just give you a modern example that each and every one of us can understand. For the alcohol, he may get, he or she may get a victory over their substance abuse. But damage may already be done from the hand. Damage to the body. Damage to the liver. Damage to the family that's had to put up with this alcohol. Now a new beginning is possible. But, but a second chance with a new liver. A second chance with a wife that has left you from having to put up with that alcohol may never happen. The point I'm making is this. When we sin, we face consequences. But a new beginning it's very possible when we decide to obey God going forward. If Joshua could speak today, he would tell us 
Obedience to God brings victory in your life and my life. He would tell us that disobedience to God is, it results in defeat in your life and my life. He would tell us that obedience to God brings blessings to your home. He would tell us that disobedience to God brings cursings to your home. The point is not the mistakes that you make in 2014. Not the areas of failure, but where do you go from here? Now as we go from 2014 into 2015, where do you go from here? What have you learned from those mistakes? 19th century preacher F. W. Robertson said this, quote, life like war is a series of mistakes. And he is not the best Christian nor the best general who makes the fewest false steps. Forget mistakes, organize victories out of mistakes. End of quote. Henry Ford defined a mistake as, quote, an opportunity to begin again more intelligent. I wonder about you this morning. Did you fail to follow God's instructions in 2014? Did you fail? Did you make a mistake and you now need a new beginning today? God is ready to give you a new beginning no matter the circumstances you face. Now that the sin has been judged in the camp, God is ready to guide the Israelites once again. We're almost through in Joshua chapter 8 now. Joshua chapter 8. Verse 1. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Remember, Joshua was probably discouraged. Just think of all the emotions he just went through with stoning Achan's family and then burning them. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of war with thee, and arise, go up to Ai. See, I have given unto thy hand the king of Ai, and his people, and his city, and his land. And thou shalt do to Ai and her king, as thou didst to Jericho and her king. Only the spoil thereof, and the cattle thereof, shall you take for prey unto yourselves. Lay in ambush for the city behind, especially notice verse 3. So Joshua arose, and all the people of war to go up against Ai. To go up against Ai. God <coughs> is encouraging a defeated Joshua. This time, with a new beginning, Joshua does things God's way. As verse 3 says, Joshua arose, and all the people of war to go up against Ai. And doing things God's way this time, the Israelites were victorious. And no matter how badly you have failed, no matter how badly I have failed, we can always get up and begin again because we serve a God of new beginnings. Now, we want to try to tie this all together for the invitation. I know we've kind of gone through a lot of Scripture, but listen closely and you know, we tie it all together as we prepare for the invitation. This is for the whole congregation, not just the deacons, not just the preacher, but everyone. As we look toward the new year, 2015, there's one way to face setbacks, to face defeat, the discouragement from this past year, and that is by being restored. Were you defeated in AI at least once in 2014? How are we restored? How are we renewed to gain victory over the AI in our own lives? We do that by rededicating our lives to God, recommitting our covenant with Him. When we're saved, when you and I got saved, we pledge to follow Christ. But sometimes like Joshua and the Israelites, we sort of go off the wrong road, we decide to do things our own way, and we fail. But our God is a God of new beginnings, and so we dedicate our lives to God, and He empowers us to conquer the enemy. And the power of God is sufficient to hold and keep any believer who turns their life over to Him. And so as we enter the year 2015, why not dedicate your life to the Lord this morning? If you do that, I promise you, there is no AI out there anywhere in this world that will be able to bring you down. <coughs> Everyone here this morning has fallen. Everyone here this morning has failed this past year. We've established that. We've made mistakes. We've tried to do things the wrong way. But if you're ready for a new beginning, a clean slate where God takes an eraser and just erases everything, a clean slate, get rid of all that trash from 2014 today, our God, come to Him. He's a God of new beginnings. Won't you do just that? Come for a new beginning to your marriage. 
A new beginning on how to view your job. A new beginning on life. As God told Joshua, sanctify, consecrate yourself. And this isn't, we're not talking about turning over a new leaf and you try to do something in your own strength. We saw what happened to Joshua and the Israelites when they tried to do it and fight Ai in their own strength. This is coming to the Lord. This is following the Lord. That's what we're talking about. Don't give the baggage of 2014 into 2015. Leave that hurt. Leave that pain. Leave that discouragement back in 2014. Come for a new beginning today. Give your life to the Lord. He'll use you. And I don't know what AIs that each one of us are going to face this coming year. There are going to be some AIs that you and I must face this coming year. But I promise you, on the authority of God's Word, there is no AI that can take you down with Christ on your side. So you say, well, Jeffrey, what am I supposed to come and say? You come and say, well, I want a new beginning. New life in 2015. And God will see you. Everyone will see your commitment. And there's something about coming forward that just confirms that. And you can go back to your seat. That's how easy the this can be. <coughs> Promising, pledging to follow Christ. Pledging to follow Him wherever He may go. To beat that AI in our lives. You see, the first encounter with Ai, Joshua didn't seek the Lord. And he lost. The second time he did. The Israelites won. Our God is a God of new beginnings. Perhaps someone here this morning has been fighting an Ai and you've lost. You come this morning putting God first in your lives. You go back to your seat ready for battle with that Ai. You come this morning. Many of you, you come for a fresh start. A new beginning in 2015. Leave that trash behind. Come to the Lord and go up against Ai. Would you bow in prayer with me, please? Father, again, we thank you that you give us the recipe for success in life. The Lord is up to us as to whether we obey Him. The victory has already been won. It is finished. Won on the cross of Calvary. But Father, so often we decide we want to do things our way. We want to do and fight in our own flesh. And Lord, just like Joshua and the Israelites, we'll lose every time. No matter how small the enemy may seem to be, we'll lose every time. We'll fail. So Father, I believe, as you've given this special word for this new year, that there are many here this morning that might just want to step out and come dedicate their lives to you for the new year, leaving all the trash behind, saying, I come to commit my life to the, a God of new beginnings. And then they can return to their seat, Lord. And again, coming forward, confirms their decision. Lord, oh Holy Spirit, we ask that you bless this time of invitation. Coming forward, we're not saying that we're perfect. Coming forward, we're not saying that, uh, that we're the worst sinner in the room, although Paul knew that he was the chief of sinners. By coming forward, we're saying, I need God in my life to face the AIs that are ahead this year. Lord, I pray. You just speak to our hearts now, O Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.